ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. I know it sounds cliche. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of Rashawn Patterson in our background. And he and a bunch of other people are going to help get us through this day because we got some things to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, it's been a rough day because I had an awning to put up. And the awning was old, but the brackets for the awning were fairly new, fairly untouched. And so I had to replace the fabric. Never did it before. It was actually pretty straightforward. It just took me four hours to do it. Uh, because normally two people can take one hour, but me, I had to take a couple of breaks. Um, got it done, though. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. That takes care of the temperature to a large degree because normally it would be about 100 degrees in here now. It's about 85 degrees. It actually says 94, but it's about 85. The temperature feels closer to 85. No, not uncomfortable, actually pretty comfortable. And with the awning, I can actually go out and sit on my porch and not have to worry about baking in no sun. And because of the awning, the wind drives right underneath it and keeps it cool. So, yay! All right, I just thought I'd explain that to some of you. Um, if I had to have a so-called professional come out and do it, it would have been over $1,000. Yeah, they made an industry out of it. And when they made an industry out of it, everything was expensive. Okay? They made an industry out of it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do you see what's in front of us? I'm going to tell you the etymology, how we got here, okay? How we got here, because there is necessary for you guys to understand. And if you guys hear me talk like that, that's because I had cousins, still have them, uh, who, <laughs> for true, they would uh, say things and it just would stick with us. So right here. Uh, that was another one <laughs> for sure. You know, uh, it's just, there was a lot of things. Now I want to tell you how we got here last night. I was doing a motion for someone. I talked with you guys about that on video. The motion I was doing for the individual was the court took his arbitration request for confirmation. This individual is incarcerated. He was in the same location that I was. But they took his motion for confirmation. And what did they do? They converted it to a civil filing. What the? No. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that that's happened to some of you. And you guys wanted to argue with the clerk of the court and yell and scream. Did not argue with the clerk of the court. I just wrote him a motion for notice of First Amendment complaint. And then I explained in there about the rules for a First Amendment complaint. Then I also did something else. Um, let's see. I don't feel like opening that up, but I'll open it. There is my people who have done the incarceration contract. Unchain my, Unchain my heart. Baby, let me be. This is Unchain My Heart. This is Ray Charles, ladies and gentlemen. Unchain my heart. You know, I just, most people think that Ray Charles is, you know, way old school, but Ray Charles is not way old school. Ray Charles is right there, y'all, right there with the best of them. Okay. Uh, this is one, and I put these on, well, we were talking yesterday about the block capitals. And so I actually decided to do some research on the block capitals, but I'm not concerned about the block capitals. What I'm concerned about is this information. Uh, yes, I want you guys to see something. While that's pulling up, I want you guys to see something. We're going to do our control F. And it's actually right behind the screen here. This particular browser puts it down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in release. 
Then we're going to put hyphen dismissal. And we're not going to put agreement, but release dismissal agreement is the legal term. It comes from the 19, or excuse me, 1885, or is it 18, was it 1864? I think it was 1864 Civil Rights Bill, Civil Rights Act of the 1800s. It is codified, supposedly, in Title 43 USC. Or is it 42 USC? I forgot which one. But anyway, 1985, not 1983. Okay? So that's where it's codified at. Let's see if we can get to... Well, I know where it is. It's under purpose, ladies and gentlemen. Just before purpose. What is up? This was supposed to already be done. Come on now. Okay. Settlement agreement between the parties. Where's my release? Oh, let's uh, make it larger. Really, it won't let me make it larger. And it's touchscreen. Let's go here and see if we can do it this way. Okay. Don't care about what the United States means. And many of you guys would not, oh, there it is right there, say that it operates in the nature of a release dismissal agreement. As I told many of you, that right there was a real catchphrase that I focused on. Why? Because it, it needed to be focused on. Wait, who this? This is the full tops, y'all. If I was your carpenter, is what he says. Why would he want to be your carpenter? You know, they, they sing and they're making money. Why do they want to be a carpenter? That don't make no sense. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the document, it's a PDF. And let's see if I can get it faster by pulling up the PDF. Because I downloaded several. Each of these documents are on the website. All you got to do is type in release dismissal. You might have to use the hyphen. Don't know because I don't know how it was uh, saved to the computer. So you might have to use release dismissal. But this is for the people who are incarcerated. If you have someone that's incarcerated or if you're incarcerated and you have access to these videos, go to the satcom911.com forward slash PDFs, PDFs in all capital letters, and do a search for release dismissal agreement. I did not put them in a particular folder. Technically, normally I would put them on SAA and put them in their PDF section, but that's not what we did here in this instance, in this juncture. Sorry, I am trying to move because there is a, uh, a lot of stuff. Now, I want you guys to understand, many of you guys who were doing the incarceration contracts, the infant estate contract, many of you guys who were using the templates lost a lot of faith because of what some judge said or some judge did, and none of you appealed. And when you did appeal, you did not appeal on the fact that you had every right to petition for summary disposition of your arbitration. Now, we were able to explain to you by looking at the, hold on, is it here? Give me a second. That the private law is the actual law, as we said, in the private law. Now, I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention. In this right here, it says in the next two sections. Okay. Now, I want you to pay attention to this right here. This is said to be the actual original section that gives you all of the changes and everything. Okay, but let's go to section number nine. Hold on now. Seven, nine, nine. You see that right there? And, and watch what it says. Prescribed in sections 10 and 11 of this title. 
derivation. Let's find out what their legal definition of derivation. Oh, girl. The shy lights, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, On Fire Remix. I was just talking to somebody and they said that he was reading a couple of posts when I did allow comments on my video. He said there were people who were talking about I was too childish, I was annoying, and so on and so forth. Okay, and your point? I mean, that, that's what we were talking about. He says if they don't like it, they can go someplace else. I said, you know, I've been telling them the same thing. If they don't like it, they can go someplace else. I'll even tell them where they can go. Okay. You know, I'll be in trouble. If you left me now, because I don't know where to look for love, and I just don't know how. I'm ahead of the song, by the way. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Bing is not giving me what I asked for. Well, anyway, getting back to this, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that this and this, the actual statute at large, does not agree. In the next two sections, which are 10 and 11, but doesn't say 10 and 11. So why did they change it? Why did they add? And this is what happens with the translations of Bibles. You'll find that most Bibles today that are being translated are translated from the King James Version, not translated from the original Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. Why is that? Because they need to keep the public heading in one direction. So when you're sitting up there banging your head against the wall trying to figure out what's going on, how come that didn't work? It's because you're not reading the correct code. So start looking at the statutes at large. Remember, the title is only prima facie evidence that there is a law. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, start putting before the title. If you're going to use 9 USC, you can use 9 USC because 9 USC is positive law title. Okay, so you can use 9 USC. So what you put on your document is positive law title, 9 USC. And then you put the statute at large. What's the statute at large, honey? Come on now. Give me the statute at large so I know what to put. I don't want you, yeah, this is it, 43884. And then you're going to put subsection 9. Okay? This ain't the statute at large. This one is the statute at large. This one ain't the statute at large. You feels me, follow me, gets me, got me, good. Okay. Whew. Who be this? If you ask me to, Patty! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Patty. This is my girl. And I've asked her to do so many things in the past, and she just she she went ahead and did everything. I even told her to make a song about attitude. And look at what she did. Okay? Talking about she had a new one. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the obtaining or developing of something from a source origin. Ladies and gentlemen. Let me explain something to you because many of you don't know how to handle things in court. Pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this right here? That's not positive law. This is a subsection. Okay, pay attention. This right here is not positive law. Okay? What you guys are not doing is you're not including this you're not including this when you're putting case law you have to because this is only evidence that there's an actual law i didn't ask you for that all right this is only actual evidence that there's a law same as this hold on we're gonna go all the way back up because you guys some of you guys won't get it for whatever reason okay this title was enacted by the act of July. See, there's a positive title, just the title, Title IX Arbitration. You can use that by all means, and then you can go subsection 9, okay? And then I wouldn't use this right here. Don't care about that, okay? 
I care about the 83 or 43 883. That's what I care about. Because that's the original. And you know what you get when you have the original, huh? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get rid of this bang. Bada bong. Gotta go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have incarceration contracts and those of you who have any other contracts, I need you to follow me because many of you are not going to fully understand where we're going. Like I said, this is the etymology of how we got here, why this was on your screen. When I turned on the computer because it has been a long day and I was outside and I came back inside and all I can tell you is it was his out outside okay and when i say it was his out i it was his out y'all okay oh hot anyway it says the agreement is a valid and binding settlement agreement between the parties in the united states that operates in the nature of a release dismissal agreement so we told you about the release dismissal agreement so let's go ahead and show you the release dismissal agreement the release dismissal agreement, an imperfect instrument, dispute resolution. So release dismissal, just put it, uh, I think it saved it. Hold on, let's do, dang, now that I got to go all the way up. Nope, can't do it that way. Oh, no, it's already saved. So it's saved with the hyphen. Okay, sorry, I don't know why I thought I was on a web page. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me do you all a favor, especially those of you who have incarceration contracts and they say that you can't do a contract with government and it has nothing to do with criminal charges sorry that this is not pulling up and that's my fault it's a well it may, you might be able to see it but i'm not able to see anything so i'm going to shut it down and pull it back up what happens with that right there see here's another one another one that's on the site release dismissal agreement validity Okay, two different colleges doing this because release dismissal agreements happen all the time every single year. Most of the time it's because they don't want the individual who was arrested, whose rights were violated, to sue them. So they work out an agreement that he won't sue them and won't discuss the case with anybody. They do an NDR. It happens all the time, people. So when Mr. Starks did his and this person went ahead and told you that the incarceration contract was a valid agreement and that arbitration was the way to go because some of you guys have had a couple of judges tell you no you all need to really understand if it was simple then everybody would have been doing it years ago it doesn't work that way okay let's go here i didn't mean to pull it that big okay Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Medicos without smoking. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Because of this potential for abuse, release of the dismissal agreements have been the subject of controversy in recent litigation. So, doesn't matter. They're still permitted. However, this note argues that release dismissal agreement by their failure to address police misconduct can expose the public to danger. Although judicial solutions protect the interests of criminal defendants and the state, courts have failed to remove the risk of continued police misconduct, which the public still bears. Now, this was not written last year, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Let me show y'all when it was written. 1994. So this 1994 document was because the police have caused so much damage to people that there have been released dismissal agreements. Hey, hey, anybody Black Lives Matter? Y'all better get some of these cases and look up this stuff that y'all, man. Okay, I'm sorry, apologize about that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why he sat up there and did all that. Get, no, get away from, going outside. I don't care how hot it is. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Hey, I go to work. <laughs> how cool, Mo D, y'all. Okay plea bargain merely as an illustration of an acceptable situation in which a criminal defendant waives constitutional rights. Notice this. The plurality of the Romery, this is a case that keeps coming up. 
that one right there. So if you want to know about release dismissal agreements, go here. 480 US 393. Okay. But it says emphasizes that it did not equate to a release dismissal agreement with a plea bargain. And further notes that some of the shortcomings in the allegory. Okay. The court apparently used plea bargaining merely as an illustration to accept this and blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. Um, wait, who is this saying the court apparently? This is, oh, <laughs> holding that the mere voluntariness is not enough to support enforcement of a release dismissal agreement. Okay, these are cases that happened prior, but we are in a different state now would release dismissal agreements, which is, like I said, it comes from the 1983 section of the Civil Rights Act, okay? Fail to credit other relevant public interests and improperly assumes prosecutorial misconduct. This is me letting you know that, yes, ladies and gentlemen, what Mr. Starks did is he did an end and around. He did an agreement with them and he had an arbitration clause. That was the catch 22. That's where they had no choice. And that's what they got Congress to sign into law. Now, people say, well, we haven't had no president. Okay, sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry about that. I just wasn't uh, trying to pull that page up just yet. I'm trying to pull this one up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have proof, and as we told you, at first, when I first got this, I noticed Cool Mo D. This was him with his little battles with LL Cool J. So he did I Go to Work and Wild Wild West <laughs> and so, so many hits just with battling LL Cool J. And trust me, in my opinion, for the style of rap and the time, he was the winner. That's my opinion, okay? But then LL went commercial and got more of a bigger fan base. And Kumo D was already starting to fade as far as fan base because he was mostly known in New York. And LL was now going commercial and jingling, baby. Anyway, because he was going commercial, that would give him a United States fan base as opposed to just a general locale fan base. Oh, well. No, I didn't go and watch no VH1 to get that information. No, see, beneficiaries are spelled wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, there are typos in the first print of any document from Congress, or had you guys not paid attention to the last couple of videos. Now, that's the first thing that we looked at, and we had to prove that it wasn't. So we have a private law. Now, this private law, that's the reason why you can't get a copy of it. Sorry, that's their technicality. That's how they're keeping it away from everybody. But this law was enacted December 3rd, 2016. Now, follow me. Me, me, me. Doctor, he didn't make it. Oh, look like we brought him back. Okay, this is what I want you guys. I didn't mean to go that far. He just always goes too far. We've already proved that Karen Haas did work for Congress during this very time. We've already proven that the other secretary for the House or, or the Senate, yeah, because we had a House and a Senate. Now, I want you all to pay attention. Daily compilation of presidential documents. Uh-oh. There's a record, presidential record. Oops, my bad, Luther Vandross. I want to tell you, baby, the changes I've been going through. Love won't let them wait, y'all. Uh, presidential compilation and congressional record, volume 162, 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we were on that page. Look at the question. How to do a FOIA to Congress. This one has how to do FOIAs to executive agencies. Okay. 
Well, I'm sorry. That's that's not that one. It's up here. No, that is the top one. Oh, there, there it is. Agencies. See? To the agency's FOIA office. FOIA! FOIA! What's a FOIA? Well, it says it right there. Freedom of information. Y'all got to learn how to read on your own, okay? Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. FOIA is under the Administrative Procedures Act. If they fall under the Administrative Procedures Act, then they are susceptible to FOIA. Okay. Now, these are videos on how to do a FOIA to Congress. Explain state and local. UFOs, what does the government actually know? How to buy a house. Oh, the process. Explain by a realtor <laughs> like we care. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you all, uh, is there such a thing as congressional access on the FOIA? Let's do this, because I'm interested. Congressional access on the FOIA, a particular delicate issue arises under the Freedom of Information Act is the proper treatment of a FOIA request received by members of Congress. Let's go here, because that's what I'm asking you guys to do. In particular, Rand Paul. Rand Paul? Rand Paul, because he's the one who introduced the bill. He was the sponsor of the bill. So he's the main man. FOIA update. IOP guidance, congressional access under FOIA. A particular data collection rises under the FOIA. Act as a proper treatment of FOIA requests received by members of Congress. Such requests may be made for a variety of different purposes. So you can do it. You can do it. You can do it, honey. Okay. Anyway. Such as to aid in a specific or general legislative function on behalf of a constituent or even as a matter of a member's primary personal interest. Ladies and gentlemen, what we need is a copy of this law, a certified copy. That kills every single argument, every single case from that point on. That's what I'm needing your help in. Now, look, some of you think you know how to write. Some of you going to put all kind of junk. No, no, you heard me say it. You're going to add all kind of junk to it. And it's going to invalidate it. Follow their process. You're not doing your FOIA request. You're doing a FOIA request. Did you see them tell you the reasons for it being done? Look, fortunately, the FOIA contains language within the Section C specifically addressing subjects of congressional access. The exact meaning of this language, though, is less than crystal clear. So, Please understand, there is a specific way you have to do it. You can't just do it like you did it to grandma last week. Plus, you can't FOIA nothing more than a government agency. And if they're an administrative agency, again, a government quasi-corporation, you can FOIA them, such as the banks. Yes, you can FOIA the banks because they're under the Treasury Department. Okay? They're one and the same. That's what the law says. They perform that function. They get their authority from the Treasury. Go back and look at March 9, 1933 Act and President's Proclamation 2039. Okay. I know, I know. I just gave some of you guys some ideas. But see, you guys should have been doing these FOIAs on the banks for foreclosures. You should have been doing that. You should have been asking, what species of currency did you lend the money? And if you're trading this property in the market, how come you have not notified the homeowner of the dividends, of the interest, of the payments? Where are those payments? How does the homeowner get access to those payments? These are questions you should be asking because the homeowners get access to those payments. Shouldn't they be able to catch their, bring their mortgage up? Okay. Guys, there are things that you can do. You don't need to wait for me to tell you to do it. You follow me? Well, you see, until you said, I don't really think about it. Some of you say, well, we already tried that. I got a lot of people saying well, they already tried something. Well, you ain't tried it now. Okay, you ain't tried it this way. You tried it that way. That's not the same thing. Sorry. Sometimes I get a little excited when I hear ignorance. Hey, ignorance! Get on over here! Okay, 
because I hear a lot of ignorance in the world today. So much trouble in the world today, can't nobody feel your pain. Okay? I hear a lot of ignorance in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't help ignorance. Ignorance, get on out of here! I can't help you! Okay, I cannot help ignorance. If you want to be ignorant, you can remain where you are. You don't even have to get up. Okay, just stay right where you is, and nobody will bother you, I promise you. Ignorant people don't get bothered. No, it's the people who are really trying to better understand things that get bothered. It's those people who get attacked. It's those people who get threatened. Because that's their job, is to threaten you into submission. It's a provisional government, people. You cannot be going out there spreading their secrets. That's what I do. You can't do what I do. You see what they do to people who spread their secrets. You can't be spreading their secrets. I told you when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, Amaru, <laughs> the, the young man's name was Amaru. He's, he's out of jail now. But Amaru told me his attorney, after he told his attorney, <laughs> gave her a motion that I wrote, she says, how does he know the secrets of the court? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, their secrets are not secrets. You can have access to it. Hey, you guys know this song, right? This is People Bryson, and he's talking about being so into me because Close your eyes, and I see the information is what was stated before, so called five. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the conversation. As I told you, I started going over this because I was going to do a video and say, Why are you people acting so afraid? Why are you sitting up here thinking? that arbitration ain't the way to go because you lost a hearing then i show people how to take their award and receive the tax credits lord have mercy for the life of me you guys you, you guys don't get it do you the policies of SA have changed. They, even though they had a policy of adhering to the contract and sticking to the letter of the contract, and the policy was that the arbitrators could not adjust the amount aside from what the parties agreed, and they had to give at least two times that amount. Well, that's not the case anymore. Sorry. We've changed that policy. The arbitrator will give what's reasonable. And that is the word. Even though they were doing what was reasonably before, the parties agreed and they agreed. But some people thought it was unreasonable to give someone a $600 million award. Yeah, we, we had a judge say that because I did a $600 million award for, pay attention, a class action lawsuit. It was called the custody class. Those people who were incarcerated, the custody class. And the court didn't appreciate that. $600 million. Well, the budget for that particular, oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the California Department of Corrections, the largest correctional department in the world, the most uh, lucrative because they're prison industries. $15 billion a year. $15 billion a year. What that be? What the uh, is $15 billion necessary for? You guys have no idea. Not only are they part of the same union that the police officers are, the peace officers union. That's all correctional officers in California are peace officers. Sorry. Got to pay attention. When they do the clamp down, they're going to be calling on those individuals to come and do something, come and work, okay? But they're all peace officers. So they're a part of the peace officers union. So they get overtime like the yin yang, okay? They make a pretty decent salary plus the kickbacks and uh, I, look, I promise you, 
I guarantee you that this happened. I'm in a pod, and it's a pod because it had separate cells, not a dorm because of, you know, open space. Ladies and gentlemen, the inmates would trade the officers their canteen or commissary for use of the phone or for extra time out of their cell. I don't, I'm not kidding you about that. The officers would buy ramen noodles from the inmate so that the inmate could watch television or potato chips and all that. That's how they would snack during the day. They didn't have to bring no lunch. They didn't have to spend no money. But the problem is, this was a reception center. Reception centers, you only get one call a month. These individuals were calling people all day, every day. And they, the officers allowed them to run the pod, allowed them to beat up on people like clockwork every single day, either in the morning, on the way to medication, or in the evening while having dinner. I had enough when I saw them beat up on a 75-year-old man. 75-year-old man, three grown men beating up on a 75-year-old man that they didn't even know. I had enough. Matter of fact, they beat up on one guy so bad that they had to call medical and everything. I remember there was an incident because <laughs> I had pissed the sergeant off. She, oh man, she said that one right there. She was talking to a new sergeant that was coming on. <laughs> Said that one right there, he's a piece of SHI. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just looked at her and smiled. Well, when they had one of those situations, what happened is the officers always knew. The officers always gave the green light. If the officers didn't get a green light, then you didn't have the green light to fight anybody. So what happens is somebody saw an enemy come in. It's reception. So people were coming in and out, coming in and out, but they saw an enemy come in. And after dinner, they went and they fought this enemy and they kept fighting. And the officer stood in front of me. My cell was the cell where they were fighting. Stood in front of my cell door. Said, all right, that's enough. I, I said, that's enough. I said, that's enough. Okay. She's got her mace in her hand. They, they have these mace cans. She's got her mace in her hand. And the third one, the first two were very soft. I mean, you I promise you, if you were there, you would barely even hear her saying, that's enough. The third one, I said, that's enough. And then she sprays the guy. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. She aimed for his face and then shot him in the chest. Just sprayed his chest and then sprayed the wall. That's the environment so ladies and gentlemen what you guys don't understand as you saw earlier with the amount of police assaults and the fact that most people are arrested without violating any law and i i do mean this most people are arrested for what without violating any law here we are my situation to this day they have not, I kept telling everybody, if they can show me a law that I violated, even a statute that I violated, then I will shut up and I wouldn't bring it up ever again. The appeals court said, hey, they didn't have enough evidence. We're overturning this case. Wait a minute. What do you mean you're overturning it? This case is supposed to be dismissed. You, what you mean? You're re remanding it? For what? Because they couldn't give me a victory because I'm calling them racist, prejudicial, ignorant anuses. And I'm not holding my tongue. I mean, I really am going off on them every single motion that I'm writing. You should see what I just called them in the last motion. I, I, I'm not doing it anymore. The God that I serve tells me that I have to be more respectful to the morons, and so I will, because he's asked. Okay, but I don't have any respect for a liar. I promise you I do not have respect for liars. So when you people lie to me, it's not about forgiveness, because I can forgive anything. No, you lie to me, that means I can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, why would I want to be anywhere near you or around you? I get people lying to me all the time, especially people calling me and asking me for help or advice because they're afraid, they're embarrassed, they don't want to tell me the whole truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bobby Brown, and he's singing about being the king of the stage. Now, what you guys don't understand, 
back when Bobby Brown first hit the scene, nobody could touch him. When he did my prerogative, Bobby Brown was on top of the world. Okay? You see, that didn't last very long. Sitting up there on the stage doing all kind of stuff, thinking he's Rick James. I'm Rick James. Oh, no, 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 no. You ain't nobody. And they had people waiting to arrest him. Officers ready to arrest him because they had heard about his show. And he would get arrested. Why? Because publicity sells, ladies and gentlemen. That made him more and more popular. Bobby Brown was on top of the world. And then he met Whitney Houston. And she introduced him to drugs. I know you guys thought that he introduced her to the drugs. Isn't that interesting how he kept his mouth shut the whole time? At no time did he ever sit up there and tell people the truth. He kept that to himself. I got to give that man some credit. Now, I'm not putting Whitney Houston down. On, on, please, Whitney, that's my girl. You don't say nothing bad about Whitney. I'm sorry. Whew. Whew. Sorry, I thought somebody was going to say something about Whitney. There was no voice like Whitney ever. I don't care if you can go back to the beginning. There was no voice like Whitney. Whitney could sing. And nobody came close to Whitney. That's why she was Whitney. The woman went by her first name. That's how good Whitney was. <laughs> Everybody, well, Whitney Houston, nobody cares about the Houston part. You heard Whitney. And Thelma Houston, man, that woman could sing too. Matter of fact, I got to do me some Thelma later. I got to download me some Thelma. You know, I don't have many Whitney Houston songs, so I'm going to have to do Whitney too. All right, let's get on back to, look at that, arts and entertainment, a &E. Ladies and gentlemen, the idea by when I went over this, I saw presidential records, congressional record volumes. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot of information here. How are they going to hide that? So do me a favor. Why don't you guys ask for these documents on or about December 3rd, on or about November 22nd, on or about November 17th, on or about October 18th, on or about September 28th, on or about September 9th, on or about September 9th, on or about August 17th. And don't just do Brantley Christopher Stark when you want information regarding, oh God, no, heavens no. Why would you do just Bradley Christopher Stark? Uh, Bradley is the man. I'm not taking that away from Bradley. But we want information. So you see all these names? Charles Elliott Hill, the second, Brian Samuel Kaufman. Uh-uh. You're going to add all of these names. Wait, hold on. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. See these names right here? You add, I want anything and everything. Now, they're going to say, well, that's going to take a while, and you got to pay for it. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a public interest. And I'm indigent, so send me one of those uh, indigent forms. I'll fill it out because you guys took money out of the economy. How can I pay you? Oh, and by the way, your service is already paid for with taxpayers' dollars. I've already paid taxes. I've already paid the fees. Don't argue with them, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you want to keep it simple, keep it simple. But if you want to be detailed so that they don't have any wiggle room, be detailed. That's up to you. All right. Now. We've taken care of that and that. Ladies and gentlemen, what I did with the release dismissal is I added it to my motion to confirm. And I specifically put in there about the release dismissal information because what I wanted to have, uh-oh, I'm waiting for my screen to refresh. There we go. I put that information in his document about the release dismissal agreement from the other release dismissal agreement document. And the reason why I put the information I'm about to show you, because it talks about all of the cases where release dismissal agreements were cognizant, that the court had cognizance of it. Cognizant? What the, does that mean? Oh, that just means that they're aware. Cognizant, like recognition. They just took the word recognition and took it and created their own 
past tense word. Why do you think I keep making up my own words? Because that's all they do. And they give it their own meaning. Like education. Okay? Just, just the way it is. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, those of you who've been running from the courts, because guess what? You, you got a bad judge who gave you a bad decision. Well, go back in, bring your motion of fraud up on the court, show proof, okay? Do your FOIA request. Ask for the information regarding that private law. Give them several questions, simple questions, like, for instance, did Congress not determine that the agreement between the parties associated with private law, blah, 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 was, pay attention, Hold on. Sorry, the person I'm helping, his name, his name was right at the top, and I didn't even do that on purpose. Say, did Congress not find the following? And you put this in a question mark. And, or, put this in a question mark. And, or, put that in a question mark. And, or, put that in a con question mark. Did Congress not expressly waive any and all defenses? to the equitable relief awarded to the parties and beneficiaries and corporate beneficiaries. See, beneficiaries are spelled correctly down here. By the arbitrator, you put a question mark. Don't worry about this one right here. This has nothing to do with them, okay? And then they said the purpose. This is written by Congress. Did Congress not say that the purpose of the act was to provide blah, blah, blah? Just questions, people. That's your FOIA request. And then you ask at the end, about this information down here. And then you ask, did Congress and the House, not or the Senate, override the president's veto respecting this private law? Where is the chain of custody for the establishment of this private law? And then I would even ask, and now how come you all have not let the beneficiaries of the law have access to the law so as to get access to their funds. These are the questions I would ask. Look, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I would ask in a FOIA request to Congress. Those are questions that serve a public interest. Why? Because if they're denying these individuals their rights under this private law, then they could deny you the same rights which the Constitution forbids. Okay? So that's what I do, ladies and gentlemen. I put up videos like this to give people out there ideas, people who've been wondering what to do next. They've been trying to figure out how to enforce their arbitration award. They didn't have a clue as to where they were headed. Now they have a clue. Only a clue? Only a clue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am satisfied. I have a headache from being out in the sun today, even though I was hydrated, I can't be out in a lot of direct sunlight. Because I did not have the canopy up, I was in direct sunlight. So this headache is going to be a comatose style headache. It's going to put me out. It's six o'clock now. I should be completely out by eight. And I don't go to sleep at eight. I go to sleep at 11 most nights. But tonight, I'll definitely be asleep by eight uh, without even trying. I have to go lay down, been having some problems breathing. It, it ain't nothing serious. It's just what I normally go through this time of year. Um, look, ladies and gentlemen, the 21st of this month is summer. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, what I did is this document right here. You have two documents, both from universities, okay? Notice this one right here, okay? So you have two documents. This is from the Charles Ledger School of Law, Villanova University, okay? And all I did was took all of this, all of this information, including the case law underneath it, and I put it in the motion to confirm summary judgment of an arbitration award and because that's all you want is a summary judgment of an arbitration award 
but I added all of this information because let me tell you what some of this case law says. In 1961, the Supreme Court of the United States interpreted the language of 1983. Remember, it's 1983. I said 1985. I'm sorry. It's 1983. 1983 has to release dismissal. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I am tired. Broadly to include official misconduct, violate of state law, volative of state law, Monroe, blah, blah, blah. As a result of such broad interpretation on the number of 1983 suits alleging official misconduct, such as unlawful arrest, unlawful search and seizure, and excessive force have increased since 1961. Leading cases, and they put that there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why the release dismissal agreement. So those of you who have people who are incarcerated, I tell you, do not give up, okay? Tell them they've been there that long. Tell them to hang on in there, baby. Hang on in there now, okay? Oh, if you didn't know, that's my boy. Well, I mean, this is, I like the way you move, by outcast, okay? But the other one was by Barry White. Hang on in there, baby. Hang on in there now. Okay, that was Barry White. Uh Uh-uh, that was you. I heard it. That sounded just like you. In these cases, criminal punishment and civil rights violations cannot be hindered. Okay, do yourself see, stating criminal defendant is not yet proven guilty, nor is private citizens guaranteed to win civil rights claim. In these cases, criminal punishment and civil rights uh, vindication, excuse me, cannot be hindered. Okay? This is for people like me who it is proved that their rights were violated. Recounting that, what is it? Paraplegic was unconstitutionally arrested in home without warrant, handcuffed and dragged to police car. A paraplegic, people. Then it says, nothing or noting after police car hit plaintiff, police pushed plaintiff, verbally abused him, and physically beat him. He hit him, abused him, and beat him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm showing you this, and I do want you to look at this, this shows you what the police, that's why I said to those people who are talking about lives matter, this All of those cases are showing you where police have violated people's rights. It's on the website, ladies and gentlemen. Just type in release dismissal. Those of you who have people who've done the incarceration contract, I'm trying to tell you all, I'm sorry I didn't go into detail about release dismissal. I've done a video talking about it, but I'm sorry I didn't tell you the significance about it because there's too much going on. I really am doing too much, but you've heard me say that before. Go ahead, take a look at the video, seven days a week. Seven days a week, I don't stop. Between doing the work that I need to do around here, and God, I gotta put the fence up for the solar. I was supposed to start that this week, so it'll be tomorrow. I got my tape measure, I got my, I gotta do 25 by 25 by 25 by 25. In other words, I gotta do 50 square feet, okay? So that I can put the solar panels up the problem is that's not enough, but for temporary, that will do, okay? Because I just needed enclosure. Uh, I do have cameras that will be placed up. And the only thing is hooking up the solar. I got to hook it up correctly because that's 2.4 kilowatts worth of possible power. If I'm going to do 2.4 kilowatts, it's got to be done right. You know what I'm saying, Vern? All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Uh, we were taken out of here by outcasts, and they were talking about they like the way. So I don't know why they like the way, but they 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 gonna explain it to y'all. All right, I have to go, have to go, have to go. Y'all take care. I hope everything goes well with all of you. And next time, adios, arrivederci, sayonara, goodbye.